This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Huyana has released this. This is the Canvas Studio 24. It is an all-in-one Windows computer slash drawing tablet workstation. There is a lot going for this thing, but I did run into a few bumps in the road getting everything working properly that you should be aware of. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and today, I need a project to work on while I'm talking about this device. That is where you come in. I need a good drawing challenge. Oh, here's one. I would love to see you apply Mike Magnola style to one of your characters. I really like this idea because Mike Magnola's comic book style is really, really unique. It's super high contrast, black and white. If you look at the colors that he's using, they're very solid colors and they're muted most of the time, but occasionally he throws in like a really bright red or something like that to make it pop. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking one of my characters, I'm probably just gonna draw my avatar, but I'm gonna to try to draw it in Mike's style. So about the Canvas Studio 24, like I said in the intro, I really like this product. What this is, is a Windows all-in-one computer with a drawing tablet attached. And the drawing tablet itself and the drawing experience is really, really good. First of all, it's, it's really big. We're talking about 24 inches and it's a relatively high resolution display. That is a resolution of 2,560 pixels by 1,440 pixels. When you have a display this big, if you were only doing full HD or 1080p, you would see a lot of pixels. It would look pretty grainy. But I think at this size, even when you're hovering over to the display, it's not quite as good as 4K, but it's crisp enough where it looks really good. Huion has also incorporated a touchscreen here, something that most of their tablets don't have. And I I think it's incorporated really well. And of course you're drawing with Huion's pen, which is really high quality pen. It's almost as good as Wacom. So you have all of that going for it. The problem comes in when we get to the window side of it. And this is where some of the red flags started popping up for me. First off, when I set it up, the first thing I noticed when I logged into Windows was that it had that little gray text in the corner that said Windows was not activated. This is something I've never seen in any of the products that I've ever reviewed, at least the products that come pre-installed with Windows on them. Usually if you get something from Dell or Samsung, Windows is not just installed, but it's activated. It gives you the little key and everything, and it's, it's all on the up and up. Here, it wasn't, that wasn't the case. Now inside the package, it did come with two different copies of that activation number. So you can activate it yourself, at least in theory, but this is where I ran into some trouble. When I did go to activate Windows, it told me that it was not a valid activation key, which is which is a bit of a problem. The only other way to activate Windows if you don't have a key is to buy it and it's $200. So what I decided to do was go to Huion's website, contact support using the email address that was provided there and see if we could sort it out that way. Right from the future here, just a quick little update. I was in contact with support. Initially what they did is they sent me a new code, a new key to enter into Windows. That one didn't work either. We ended up a few days later, they actually remoted into my computer and activated Windows for me. The service folks told me that they were having some problems with their Windows keys and that they were able to fix it. Now, I did just get like 20 minutes ago, the Canvas 16, the Canvas Studio 16. Subscribe or whatever if you wanna see that review in a week or so. And that also was not activated. However, this one seemed to go a lot easier. I just hit the troubleshoot button and it automatically activated for me. So I'm not sure how widespread of an issue this is, but that is something you should be aware of. Huion support seems to be on top of it, which is good, uh, but it might be something that you do run into. We have a lot of specs to talk about. First, the display. I mentioned this is a 2.5K resolution and it looks great. It doesn't get super bright, about 220 nits, which is a good number. But I found that when I had this in front of my big windows, it's maybe because of the coating on the front, I got a lot of reflection. It, it was a little hard to see at times. I wanted it to go just a touch brighter, but when I had it back on my main desk, it's all good, it, it looked great. Unlike many of Huion's other products, this is a full-blown computer. So we have some specs inside to talk about as well. It has a 12th gen Intel i7 processor and also an NVIDIA GTX 1650. You have 32 gigabytes of RAM and a full terabyte of SSD storage. This is the only configuration that this comes in. So if you do need more storage or if you wanna get a faster graphics card, you can't really do that. But this computer is beefy enough to handle pretty much anything that I go at it. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a great 
3D rendering computer, even though you could do a lot of stuff with Blender on a computer like this because it has a discrete graphics card. It's just not the highest end thing that you're gonna find out there. It's solid, it's mid-tier, it's good. It's just not amazing. Of course, 32 gigabytes of RAM is very good. I think a terabyte of storage, very good for what I do. So Huion is going for that value play, and I think there, they kind of nail it. So this is not just a pen-enabled display, it's also a touch screen, which makes it so much easier to use. If I'm in Photoshop, I can pinch to zoom in and out, I can tap on various things to activate them. Since it is such a large screen, using Photoshop on something like this is really nice. Oftentimes with smaller displays, Photoshop's interface gets kind of hard to touch and, and navigate around because those hit areas become really small. On a 24 inch display, that is not a problem at all. That multi-touch works really well. I wasn't getting any extra like little lines or things like that on my canvas from my hands. Occasionally it would tap some kind of interface thing and it would change the layers but that was those kind of things were few and far between. Now you've probably already put this together, but 24 inches on this thing is absolutely ginormous. This thing takes up my entire desk. It really is a luxury having that much space to draw in, but it's also kind of big and bulky and heavy. Now with that space, they've added a whole bunch of ports. For example, there's six entire USB type A ports here. You've got four tucked along the back and you've got two along the side. Also along the side, you have a headphone jack. Along the back, you have some more audio jacks. You've got an HDMI port and another display port in case you want to attach another monitor to this. And then you have the power port itself. Now, I do have a little bit of a complaint here as to the positioning of where much of this IO is. So you've got your display and on the back, they've added a chunk to it where all of the computer parts are. And all those things get plugged up and into the bottom of the computer. And immediately when I took it out of the box and tried to plug in the power cord, I saw the problem I was going to have, which is the, the power cord needs some room to actually come down from the bottom and then bend out, which means any cord you plug in back there is going to get in the way of the stand and the feet and how this thing stands up. And at first I didn't understand how the stand works because you've got this back foot, which is adjustable, and then you've got this other, I don't know, floppy foot. But once I had some cords plugged in there, it made perfect sense as to why they designed the stand this way. They did it so that there was room for those cords to move. It was almost like they designed this thing and they said, oh crap, you can't actually stand it up and plug in cords at the same time. We need to redesign the stand. This also means that it stands significantly high off the desk when you have it at a reclining position. And moving it from a stand-up position to a reclining position isn't just as easy as pulling the tab and just pulling it up like it is with a normal Huion tablet. You actually need to adjust both feet in order to get this into a position. So moving this around is a little bit more clumsy than what I'm used to. This isn't a deal breaker, but it's just kind of a weird design. So like any computer with a graphics card and a nice processor in it, you're going to need to ventilate that thing and so you're going to have fans and you're going to hear fan noise. Now there's some good news here. The fan noise is actually not bad. You can hear it humming, but it's not super loud. Even when I was playing a game on it, and yes, I, I did decide to boot up a game, it can run most games at like not super high settings for the highest end games, but decent settings. Even when I was playing that, the fans weren't like kicking into super high gear. Now, the one thing that was a little bit weird as I booted up that game is the speakers are located around the back, so it doesn't sound good. They're not pointing towards you. They're kind of encased. It's not great audio. You're probably going to want to use some headphones with this. Next up, we got to talk about drawing on this thing. Before we do, I want to shout out today's sponsor, Squarespace. You probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business, but it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand with members areas. You can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all this to fit within your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business and find the perfect starting place and see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, what about drawing? It does come with a pen. It actually comes with two pens. It also comes with this little pen hole 
holder. Inside of that, we have some extra nibs, including some of these nice felt tip nibs. These provide a little bit more friction. They're a little bit softer. They're fun to draw with. It also comes with a drawing glove. So the drawing experience on this is really, really nice. When I'm drawing on it, it feels a lot like drawing on a Wacom tablet. It is really good. When I run through its paces and I kind of test it out and I'm trying to find flaws in the pen, I can definitely find them. There's a little bit of wobble to the lines as I'm drawing and some little quirks like that. But overall, it's a really nice pen. The initial activation rate is pretty good. It holds pressure really, really well. Basically does everything I need a pen to do. Also included in the box are a keyboard and a mouse. Both of these take triple A batteries, those are not included in the box. The keyboard is 100% Bluetooth and it worked for me right out of the box. I didn't have to sync it up to the computer or anything. And the mouse has this little dongle thing, which I just plugged into one of the USB type A ports and I was off to the races, worked great. So pros and cons, what do I think? Overall, I think this is a wonderful product. I think it's powerful enough. I think it's a great drawing experience. I do wonder about those red flags, that Windows activation problem that I was having. Is this a one-off thing that just happened to me because I was one of the first people to get this? Or is this going to be a problem that every single person has when they get this product? That question might be answered for me in the next week or so. They just shipped out the Canvas 16, which is an all-in-one. It's like a Surface Pro type thing. Really excited to try that out. If Windows is not activated on that, that's gonna be a good hint as to, you know, what, how big of a problem this might be. We will find out. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.